All right, well, since we're recording, um, people can listen to this in the future if they get joined in late. We have the bulk of the people that had signed up for this. Welcome everybody. This is Patrick Hebert, COO of VCI Development speaking. Um, I'm not quite as polished as, as Mike Cobb or Rachel Jensen at doing uh, webinars, so you'll have to bear with me. And I woke up with a bit of a sore throat, so hopefully we'll make it through it. I'm not going to take any more of your time than we need to, but uh, I think it's uh, necessary to go through this and, and I hope we answer a lot of your questions. Obviously, this is a very exciting time for the Grand Bayman owners and uh, you know, an exciting time for ECI as well to, to become part of the uh, Best Western family, uh, the flagship Best Western hard brand. Um, franchise and and uh, you know it's a it's a it's something I, I think i've been alluding to a lot of since i started a couple of years ago in the role that um you know we we want to brand the property uh, we wanted to brand the property and now we now we are I mean, best western is one of the top three hotel companies in the world in terms of, of size and they uh you know that, that's a that's a pretty big deal for all of us um, this, you know, is the first branded operating property for ECI, so that's exciting for us as well, as, as it is for you. And what I want to do today is just um, go through a little bit of uh, the questions and thoughts that you you may have had. Uh, you know, we've kind of been, uh, I'll be honest, we, we wanted to uh, announce this a little differently. Um, we wanted to be a little more communicative with everybody, but... Um, you know, I was under a non-disclosure agreement over the last year and a bit as we were negotiating with Best Western. Um, I tried to allude in my pretty regular communications that we were working on on branding the property, but I really couldn't talk about specifics. And so I, uh, you know, I, I apologize if if anybody felt kind of left out, and um, you know, wasn't. You know, we we couldn't really talk about it much, and obviously this this couldn't be kind of. It would have been, you know, unwieldy, and and we would never have got anything done. So, you know, we we would have loved to have gone through this process with you, but we like we went through this process for you. And uh, let's talk a little bit about some of uh, some of the details. Obviously, the key benefits of of a, a brand like Best Western, well, there's many benefits, but I just noted a few of the key ones here. Uh, we really expect an increase in occupancy and the ADR, the average daily rate. Um, not, not only, you know, because of Best Western's, you know, prowess around us have knowing that, you know, if they've got a limited time that they, time and budget for uh, vacationing, you know, you want to go somewhere where you're calm that it's going to be up to a certain standard. And I think it's one of the biggest strengths of Best Western is they bring that to the table for us. It's not a guess for somebody to come to the gardens, you know, reading through our, our reviews, most of which we are proud of that are, you know, much better than they were in you know, the customer service. But just having the Best Western moniker is, is a big deal for, for people feeling confident. Things like the points pro Western has one of the larger points programs among hotels in the world as well. And if you're a, a Detroit businessman that's traveling back and forth to Chicago or something and, and you're racking up best Western points, because that's where you typically you know in, in, in a northern climate, you're going to want to take your family to a tropical resort and, and we'll be one of the few, well, a, a two best Westerns in Belize and only one on the island in Ambergris. So, you know, if you want to use your points, uh, Best Western, you're going to, here in Belize, you, you have very limited. The non occupancy ADR type of things are just the, the general standards that Best Western brings to the table. You know, customer service training. We all know that in, in the Caribbean and Latin America in general, you know, there's, there's a, you know, 
cultural differences from North American expectations and, and customer service training is, is not easy. And bringing uh, best Western training procedures and policies into the program is, I think, going to have a huge benefit for us. That spans right from, you know, the, the front desk and, and how people check in and out, you know, the concierge type services, welcoming people in and, and helping them book golf carts or sailing tours or snorkeling or whatever it is, right through to you know, the cleanliness training. Um, Best Western just came out with this last month, a new, uh, likely due to the virus issue, but a, a new cleanliness procedure with, you know, higher sanitation requirements and you know things like that i think are always beneficial for the hotel as well although we you know we do like to believe we do a really good job of cleaning um, again customer confidence on a best western procedure is is going to be higher than an unknown brand and it brings you know software systems and consistency and are lo lo linked globally to to the otas the online travel agents and really that you know that that brings a huge benefit with us in terms of people from all over the world you know seeing us top rated on the you know on the expedias or travelocities of the world booking.com and the and the software systems also give us internally that that the best western software systems are bringing better reporting which we will believe we believe will really benefit our our statements our rental statements to to you the owners so there, there's a number of other benefits, of course, but those are kind of the, the top ones in, on, the, on the revenue side. Um, I think the, the other big ones on the, you know, the other side of the coin is on the expense side. And it's allowing us to, to lower our rental acquisition fee, you know, the cost to acquire the guest from 25% to 15%, which is a, which is a huge amount, um, you know, right, because that's right off the gross and a 10 per saving. 10% savings right off the gross is, is a big deal. It's also going to, you know, part of what we're, it's not necessarily a, you know, a best Western benefit, but one of the benefits that comes along with, with the revamping of the rooms is uh, lowering of the utility costs. We're, we're going to be installing um, AC set point controllers. They're controlled via Wi-Fi. We can, we can literally set um, a minimal amount um, potentially whether somebody's in the room or not, you know, motion detection and, and those sorts of things. What, what we've experienced not only at uh, Grand Bayman, but at our other properties as well is, you know, people will leave the room during the day, go to the beach, but leave their AC on really low. So when they get home, it's icicles hanging from the ceiling basically. And that, that's a huge use of, of power that's unnecessary. And, and these systems will help us control that as well as linking back to the way it was meant to be in the beginning, linking the AC key card controller to the door lock. So, you know, we provide one key, um, they, they check in, they, they go to the room, they get in the room, they put the key in the, in the AC controller, and if they wanna leave, they, they need to take that out, which also shuts down the AC units. So that, that we expect both of those things to, to really save a lot on the, on the power bills as well as things like low flow shower heads. You know, I've become a bit of an expert in on eco-friendly homes and building things, uh, building homes in the eco communities um, in, in Central America. And, and, you know, you get a lot of benefits from simple, something as simple as a low flow shower head. Not only does it cut down on the water, but it cuts down on the cost of the heated water, which is actually way more expensive. The power to heat the water is more expensive than the, than the water itself but it helps in both cases. So there's, there's things where we're gonna be doing that, uh, you know, really lower the expenses. So the, the takeaway from this is basically we're, we're expecting considerably higher revenues from the Best Western franchise and we're able to reduce the expenses as well. So just to give you a little um, understanding of the history, like I said, the, the, the Best Western agreement was signed in late February and we did, really want to you know, bring everybody into the, into the loop earlier. Um, as I said, I had to sign a non-disclosure agreement and we couldn't talk about it. Obviously, Best Western negotiates each one of these um, agreements with the resort companies individually. So they don't want you know, our agreements spread around <clears throat> to other ones that might try to use that in their negotiation with Best Western later. 
So, you know, we tried to do as best we could to kind of, you know, hint at the, an upcoming branding um, and then release the information as soon as we were allowed to. And, we, and um, you know, I, I'd sent out the, uh, the work orders for the, the room upgrades, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, we wanted to include that early with your statements, your Q1 2020 statements that just went out last week. And the reason for that is I just wanted you to be able to kind of see what you were owed or wherever you were standing on a, your net revenue, rental revenue, versus the cost of upgrading a room. And I, I know that was kind of putting the cart before the horse, you know, saying here's what you owe before we've even told you about what it is. But that was the rationale rather than wait um, you know, where, you, you know, for instance, if, 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 if we owed you a certain rental revenue, rather than send that to you and have you send it back to, to pay for the upgrades, um, you know, we want to give you the option to look at it and net it out. Um, that was really the rationale behind it. And I, I do realize that it wasn't kind of the, the order that we'd have preferred, but that's just the way it worked out. But since the, uh, you know, obviously we haven't mentioned even really talked about the whole COVID-19 coronavirus issue. Obviously that's had a huge impact around roughly mid-March. Just about everybody checked out of the gardens for the last month and a half, almost two months now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, we, nonetheless, we've, we've, you know, we've stayed open. We've had a few people check in recently as other Resorts have closed, and and really we, you know, we stayed open because, you know, we're committed to our employees, and that's where it really boils down to. And and, you know, I would say probably ninety percent of the resorts are higher, closed in mid March to to late March, and we we suffered through it. We continue, you know, we kept the employees that most of the employees we could keep, almost all of them other than basically the bar and the gym and they're kind of on vacation for a little bit. But, you know, we, we kept the rooms open. We tried to bring in longer term tenants that were wanting to stay in the country and, and not exit, even though these other resorts were closing. And, and, we, and we did, we were lucky enough and worked hard enough to get a number of them, but obviously the occupancy is very low right now compared to what it would be in, you know, in the high season of March, April and early May. But we've, you know, during this time, we've we've not stopped working on the best Western items. We've, you know, since signing the agreement, we've we've been working on the software systems, training schedules, planning for room upgrades and property upgrades. We've been even doing social distancing by planting, you know, where the maintenance guys could work rather than close together fixing something. They they were working, you know, planting trees ten feet away from each other and things like that. So. We've tried to do the best we can with, with the lockdown that was put on us and on Ambergris. And it, and it was, you know, Ambergris Key took this um, virus very seriously. It's actually probably one of the most locked down areas in Central America. Some of the countries are, you know, on one side of the spectrum, virtually ignoring the virus entirely, and others are, are, are like, like Belize, have taken it quite seriously. So been lucky to hear as of today we're told that there are zero cases active cases there were 18 I believe at one point in the country which is obviously significantly smaller than than most countries were used to in the US and Canada but um, you know there's a small population here so they did take it seriously and and the, the medical care is you know gonna get spread out if, if it got bad here so fortunately you know hopefully we're over we're over the small hump that we had with the virus, and we'll we'll see, you know, over the next weeks, where where we go. But the, just to give everybody a, a bit of an update, they allowed they, they had closed the island off completely to even other Belizeans. Um, so the ferries and the and the airport were shut down. Um, this last Monday, the ferries opened up. Um, they're kind of analyzing anybody that comes off. I know even our staff who have gone to the mainland and back have to prove that they are employed on or live on the island before they get off the ferry <clears throat> and um, my understanding is Monday Tropic Air is starting up with flights again but we don't really have any idea of when the borders to Belize are going to be open but that's where we sit right now. So 
So next steps, um, like I said, you recently received your Q1 2020 rental statements, which shows your current rental balance that is owed or that we owe you related to and, and include a, a Best Western um, invoice, basically the, the work order that has the upgrade fee on it. And I, I realized that you know, it's a little bit strange to get an, you know, a work order that doesn't specify what the work was going to be done, but we are 99.9% .9 complete with the actual list of upgrades and um, items that are on the, the best Western upgrade list. And we will be sending that out to you shortly, you know, uh, along with some other documents that I'll talk about in a minute. And you'll be able to go through, it's a, item list of I think it's about 50 or 60 items on there that will we need to do to have every room um, come up to the the bar to become a part of the best western and uh, you know feel free to look through that if you have any questions about it um, I think we've made it very you know very fair there's there's a lot of pieces that, that um, Grant Bayman is taking on on the expenses ourselves um, some that are applied obviously to the room and but each individual item you can look across exactly at what the anticipated cost will be for each item and I think you'll see that it's you know it's fair if you if you feel like something on there doesn't seem fair then then I'm probably just not describing it well so feel free to send me an email anytime and ask any questions you have um, in the next few days, I'm hoping by the end of next week, we're there with the lawyers right now, these documents, so I don't want to promise on their behalf what their schedule will be, but I'm hoping we get them back soon. We're not, not radical changes, but obviously we need to update the rental management agreement. Um, there will be a property management agreement and, an, and an H, a new HOA agreement. Um, the HOA fees aren't changing, but we've learned things over the years from, from having resorts and you know, watching what other HOA are, HOA is doing, especially ones here on the island, and just fine tuning it a bit. But you're you know welcome to look through it and see if there's anything. I think in in all cases, there you know the the benefits for the owners that the the agreements all have more benefits than for the owners than the than the old agreements did. You know, obviously the rental management agreement has to you know change from the 25 percent to 15 percent um, rental or guest acquisition fee. Etc. And we've we've separated the rental and property management agreement um, because potentially, I mean, in most cases, you're going to have both. But you know, if you're not renting your unit, but you still want you know it managed, you want your fridge checked, you want you know make sure there's no water leaks, you want you know whatever different things done to your room under a property management agreement with with us, then that technically could be a you know something done without the rental management agreement. So you'll be receiving those shortly as well. And of course you can review and, and send myself or our team any questions that you have. So you have options. I know um, it's felt a little bit like, here's the best Western plan, you know, here, here, here's what you have to live by. That's not the case. And I just wanna explain the options that you do have. You obviously, when we, and we hope you choose option number one, which is to have your unit join the Best Western Rental Program. We really believe the benefits are, are very high for, for yourselves, and uh, we hope to have as many units under the Best Western flag as, as we can. Um, but you also have the option to manage your unit long-term leases on your own. Uh, but just be aware that that does require every, every you know, we, we can apply, we do apply and we have a BTB, which is the Belize Tourism Board license um, and the reporting that goes along with that and the tax collection and everything. And we have that for all the rooms that are under our rental agreement, which will now be under our rental agreement and Best Western flag. But any, any rooms that are not under that agreement have to have their own license and do their own reporting and their own tax collection. It's not insignificant it's a you know it's a bit of a pain of course you can have somebody else manage that for you but on a long-term lease it is it is a bit of a, a pain but you know that that i just want everybody to realize that um you know if, if they'll check everything whether your taxes are up to date etc and and before they issue the license 
And so if, if you are intending to rent your, your unit yourself on a long-term basis, just be aware that that is a requirement, a law and the lease. And if you're on your own with the, the leasing, obviously the Best Western benefits, um, you know, don't apply. And that means that, you know, your guests can't use the concierge services of Best Western. They're, they're not going to, you know, be able to go to the front desk. And I mean, we'll, we'll obviously be as, as obliging to your, to your guests as possible. But from a Best Western standpoint, um, you know, they, they don't, they don't really want to give all the benefits of the Best Western to people that aren't in the, you know, owners that aren't using their units in the Best Western program. So I'm sure you can understand that. And then the third option is you can, you know, obviously not rent your unit or you live in it or whatever it is and just not be in any rental program at all. So I just want to clarify that because I think there was a bit of an impression and maybe, you know, we had sent out a, a frequently asked questions, uh, FAQs earlier. And, um, you know, there was a bit of a, you know, a liquid document where, you know, we're fine tuning items as we go along. So we're going to be sending out a, a re revamped FAQs as well, which will list this sort of thing. And, you know, in, in hindsight, we probably should have been a little bit better at wording the answers to our question to your questions and the questions we thought you would have. But uh, we're also learning and, and we will try to answer them better in the next version. Looking to the future, I you know when I came on as the the CEO and you know discussed this with with Mike and and uh, the board, um, we we I, we agree and you know this is a the strategy for the company. Our our core competency at ECI is we we find really nice locations and we build really nice communities, whether they're a small resort or twenty five hundred acres like Grand Pacifica in Nicaragua or or wherever they are in Panama or Costa Rica or wherever they are now and wherever they're gonna be in the future. And that's really what we do as our core competency at ECI. And you know, that's what we owe our shareholders. Running the amenities um, of the bars, restaurants, gyms, golf courses, tennis courts, that sort of thing, that's not really within our core competency. We believe that we are better off finding you know, partners that that is their core competency and that's what they do. For instance, the rental business. We are, you know, we are actively looking and actively speaking with companies that are, you know, rental and property management companies, and that's what they do for a living. And they're not resort builders or community builders, and and they focus on fine tuning their craft. And we do believe that that's the best for, you know, our owners to have the world class you know, companies that do that for a living come in and do that. So I just want to clarify that, yes, although we are managing this um, business, the rental business specifically, and, and the amenities as we speak, that really isn't our long-term goal. We're, we're looking for a partner that's a quality, you know, proven track record, like I said, world-class entity to, to come in and do this. And, and, and we, have, we have some in mind. I, you know, I, I don't want to mention their name at this point, their names, but I, you know, my, my goal and, and Mike's goal and, and the company's goal is to, is to, you know, put the best entities in the best position. So you know, we were providing the best return on investment for, for you, the owners of these condos. And we want you to be very happy. I know, you know, there's been issues, you know, whether it's, the titles or your return on investment hasn't been what you'd expected and, and those sorts of issues. And we're not, we're not blind to those issues. We, we you know, we want to improve and we, we want to find the best solutions to those. And I think, you know, finding the partners to run the rentals is, is just one piece of the puzzle for that. We want you to be happy with your investment in, in the gardens. We want you to be proud of it. We want you to talk to your friends and family about it. And hopefully, you know, you're our best salespeople and marketers is word of mouth. So, you know, it, it's not like, you know, we're, we're, we're just stuck in a rut and that's the way it's going to be. But in the meantime, as we, you know, move forward over the next few months, we're, we're very lucky to have staff like Lorena. I think most of you have probably talked to or met Lorena either on the phone or, or live. And Lorena has worked 
Lorena Vasquez is our, our property manager at the gardens and she's worked with the Best Western before. And, uh, you know, we continue to be involved now and when we have property management company in place. So, you know, there will be the consistency and we really appreciate what Lorena has done in her few short months to, to make improvements at the, at the gardens. In fact, we were doing really well. I think you'll see in your, you know, in your Q1 rental statements, um, we had a, you know, a really good February and a really good start to March. And then of course, mid-March, it kind of the bottom fell out with the virus, but you know, it was starting to show, you know, Lorena and, and Ivan Levy on our, you know, marketing director side and others on our team were, were you know, when we've recently brought in another person on the, on the rental management side, that's basically working with the OTAs, the online, trans, uh, uh, online travel agents. And so we're, we've, we've built a really good team. And then when you layer Best Western skills and, and, and talent and, and name on top of that, I really think it, it bodes well for the, for the future. Now, I, the only outlying question is how long of an impact will the coronavirus have? So our return on investment, I don't like to throw out specific numbers because I don't like to make promises that we can't keep. But in talking with the Best Western relative to the numbers that we've had now, relative to what their Best Western does in Belize City and other Best Westerns in the area, they expect to probably boost at least 50% higher um, occupancy than we've been able to have over the course of, of the year. You know, not 50% not you know, added to ours, but 50% of what we were doing added to ours, if that makes sense. And, and also, you know, with the Best Western name, as I mentioned earlier, we, we expect an increase in the ADR, the lower cost of rental acquisition and, and lower cost of utilities. So we do expect, you know, a, a better R, ROI for sure. Now, that's, you know, we have to see what the virus impact is on that, but we, you know, we expect, I mean, just as an aside, I've, I've been watching, there's, um, in, inside reports that come out from from the OTAs like the Expedias and companies like that, Booking.com, and they're showing a real spike in people looking at booking reservations September, October, November, which is, you know, obviously higher than the high or sooner than the high season. And the reason for that, I guess, is people are just feeling very cooped up, and you know that they're anticipating once. You know, worldwide worldwide travel is allowed again. There is going to be a, a pretty significant initial spike in in travel and vacationing. Of course, you know people's you know jobs were impacted by the virus and you know much higher unemployment. So there, there's there's counting countering statistics as well. But based on you know people searching for where to go and when they'd like to go, that's that's what's showing in the in the statistics online. So joining the program, as I've said, you know, we, we had to we had to nail this down as best we could. Um, to, I, you know, people, I was I was somewhat stuck between a rock and a hard place. You know, people would say, well, you know, if you're not going to give us a number of what it's going to cost, how are we supposed to know what we're you know which way we're leaning and what we want to do? You know, people were saying, is this going to cost five thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand? What's the number to join Best Western? Um, so I went through the list of all the things that we have to do and did our best to estimate what those things are going to cost. And that's the number that came out of it. And like I said, I'll send you that list and you can look through it. But uh, the one time um, up, upfront fee is, or it's really a one time fee. It's an initial fee to join the Best Western. And I think it's, it's you know, it's a very fair, it's a, you know, it's a, um, it's a, it's a good fee for, you know, list the long list of things that are on it and it's you know the opportunity right now is we can do some of this work in bulk if we have a large number of of owners deciding to join the best western then you know that's why that's why my anticipation is is that and that's where this number came from so you know if, if somebody joins a year from now we can't promise that it could be two or three times as high as that number because if we're doing one-off changes to one room that's different than if we're doing 42 rooms at a time, for instance. But you will see soon what that includes. And, you know, again, if you have any questions about it, feel free to ask. There are, 
very minor fixed costs per per room per month. There's a Best Western per room software fee, digital marketing fee, and brand fee, and it adds up to nineteen dollars and four cents per room per month. But obviously, you know, on your first night booking, you've you know erased that and 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 considerably more. So the good news is that the the fixed fees are lower and are low and your um, rental acquisition fees from 25% down to 15 and and plus the anticipated lower cost of utilities all adds up to you know a, a, a lower cost of ownership and cost of joining the program. So we understand there are questions and concerns. Um, you know, like I said, we would have loved to kind of gone through all this before we even signed anything with Best Western, but it that just wasn't the opportunity that we were presented with. We have been updating the FAQs, the Frequently Asked Questions sheet. Um, I'll go through a few of them now. I'll try not to take up too much time, but I think that's probably a good way for us to, to you, know, you know, capture a number of the questions and answers, and then you know, I'll take some as well as we have time off of the, the list that you may be sending in here. I'm also looking at ones that are coming in online here as we speak. So pardon if I'm quiet for a few seconds while I'm, while I'm reading the questions. I think we answered one of them um, from Mario Lamoth is, is the Best Western fee a one-time fee or will there be others? The, the Best Western fee is a, a one-time initial fee and then, like as you know, then there's the 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 um, hard costs that I just mentioned on the previous slide of nineteen dollars and change, and that's per month per room. <coughs> excuse me. And then the the fifteen percent acquisition fee. So that there is no anticipated or contractual fee that oh this you're going to have another fee in six months or another fee in a year or anything like that once. You know, you will have to keep each room up to the quality bar that is set by this initial upgrade. But obviously, we're going to do everything we can to to maintain the rooms at that level. Um, Susie Silliman is asking, how will the units be prioritized from rental through the Best Western Reservation System? Is there an algorithm that ensures rentals are fair? Yes. The, the the rental system and mo most of the, to be honest most of the uh, the rental systems out there do have that function built into them. Um, there are caveats to that. I mean, obviously, the Best Western system also has that. But but when people request a certain people that have stayed, for instance, guests that have stayed in the past and they like a certain room that they've stayed in, if it's available, we let them. You know, we're we're trying to make our guests ha happy, so we will let them request. A certain room, and and book that room, but the the software is designed, the algorithm is designed to, you know, it can't make it perfect every month or even every quarter, but it, it is designed to look at the past bookings and and even it out. If one's lower than the average, it's going to put people in those rooms, and that's generally you know how they work. But like I said, there are there are caveats to that, and you know. If, Obviously, if a room has a water pipe break and it's out for three or four days while we fix it and clean it up, then that can impact it as well. But in general, um, that's how they work. I'm just trying to get through some of the questions here. I don't know. Um, also, I think I have some of these answers an answered in the FAQs, but uh, one of the question is BW doing the rental, just rental management. Oh, sorry, this is from Derek Chossum. Is BW doing Best Western doing just the rental management or property management as well? Uh, they they are really just involved in the rental management. Most of these hotel companies, um, they, they you know they give you their their name and they give you a lot of training. Um, they give you you know a lot of policies and procedures and they inspect fairly often that you're keeping it up to up to the standards but underneath that you have flexibility in terms of how you do the property management so as i mentioned earlier 
um, we will be doing the property management uh, in the, in the short term, but we're also looking to to find a an entity to to take that over in the in the future. Um, I think I answered the other ones. Is the Best Western fee a one-time fee? Yes. Um, Jeff Finstead, how many owners were consulted? It couldn't involve all of them, but were any consulted? Um, unfortunately, I, I wasn't allowed to talk about the Best Western contracts or agreements with, with anyone. As I said, I tried very, you know, subtly to, to put it into my updates. I, I try to put in a Best Western or a Bayman Gardens update out every three weeks or so, probably every two weeks to a month. On, on that topic, just if, if you're wondering and you haven't seen my semi-regular updates, I would ask that you look through your um, spam folders or junk email folders or whatever it's called in your system. Um, you know, I've had a number of emails from, from our Graham Bayman owners asking questions that are exactly what I just answered in, a, in an update that was a month ago or two months ago or something. And so then we realized that they weren't receiving my, um, my emails because it was in their junk folder. Um, so if you make um, my email address whitelisted, which basically means you add it as a, a contact in your email system, and, and usually if you reply to it as well, That'll help your email system and your email domain controller know that you're okay with my e receiving emails from from me. So we we'll probably end up missing a lot less of of those. Uh, we're also looking at other solutions on our side in our IT department of what we can do to stop that from happening. But because ECI development does send out an awful lot of emails from a lot of our staff, uh, we tend to get flagged as you know put into people's junk emails. And, and so if you're not hearing from me or Lorena or Valeria or someone at uh, ECI or Graham Bayman fairly often, then maybe check your junk email folders. Uh, there's a number of emails or questions coming through. I'm just trying to skip over or repeat ones. Uh, one of the questions from Don and Tommy Johnson, how do we let you know that we want to join the BW rental program and how soon will it begin? Um, we had initially hoped that we could have a soft opening in you know, late August to September. Obviously the, the virus really put a damper on that. Um, we'd really like to open as a Best Western for the high season, the late 2020, early 2021 high season, um, probably with a soft opening and maybe in November, and uh, by soft opening, you know, we're just going to blend it in, um, get a, you know, we're, we're going to practice being a Best Western to some extent, you know, and uh, and and then go in full full force into the high season, and you know, obviously, really hoping that the 2021 high season is is outstanding, because a, a lot of people weren't able to travel this year. So um, for how do you let us know, you can just um, send Lorena or myself um, an email. It's probably the easiest way. And uh, you know, we'll work with you if you wanna use um, net balance on your, on your rental uh, revenue, we can do that. You know, subtract it from what is owed to you after this last quarter and, and go forward. We're, you know, the first, we're going to work on the, the first people that join. We're going to work on their units first, and so as we get going, you know, we're we're going to uh, be you know renting out those units as a Best Western, you know, in, in order that they came into the into the system. So there is some incentive to to getting your unit involved early rather than than waiting. Let me just quickly go through the the. FAQ list and see if there's anything that we might have might have missed. One of the items is um, well, which version of Best Western will we be? I think I mentioned that earlier. We're the we're the Best Western main flag or the hard brand as they call it, um, which basically means it's the Best Western without any designation of beyond behind that or soft brand. It's much like we are doing with the Marriott. Um, 
hard brand on the on the beach nearby here. Um, there's you know other soft what are called soft brands um, at the lower a lower tier like the the Marriott Autograph. Um, we're we're the we're we're going to be the Marriott hard brand on the beach, and we're the Marriott or the Best Western hard brand uh, at the gardens. And and really what the, the rationale for that was there's there's other options. Best Western, just like Hilton or Marriott, has soft brands as well. Um, Best Western, for instance, has the Pl Best Western Plus. But our take on that was, you know, Best Western is known as a quality brand, but not technology, but it liken liken it to something like a McDonald's. You go to McDonald's or you go to an A&W, you, you, you know what you're going to get. You know, there, you don't have to wonder whether it's going to be terrible. It's very consistent and, and that's, that's a benefit. But adding the plus behind a Best Western, you know, maybe adding the plus behind um, a Hilton or something like that is, is different, but a Best Western being known for, you know, a well-priced, good quality product. I, the, the 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 hoops we would have had to jump through and the expense to enter the system to become a plus didn't really outweigh the name plus. So we went with the the hard brand Best Western, and it's also what Best Western suggested for us. So that's the answer to that question. Um, there's a number of questions coming up about. Um, which documents are we going to receive? I think I mentioned that the property management, rental management, and a new HOA updated document to look through. Uh, like I said, I'm just quickly scanning through the, the list of questions and for ones that I may not have answered yet. Um, what if I don't want to rent my condo at all? You don't have to. You will not have to pay the Best Western fee if you want to live in it or just not rent it have it available for yourself at all times. Uh, I know there's a few questions that I wanted to get to that are in here. So pardon my slight delay here. Oh, um, if I put my condo into the Best Western Rental Program, are there owner usage restrictions? What own use of your unit is you'll have up to six weeks per year of usage um, for free, up two weeks during high season and four weeks during low season. Um, anything that you want to use over that um, complimentary allotted time will be at a nominal fee of 30% of the of the rack rate for the room at, of that time of year. So you have six weeks to spread two weeks in high season, four weeks in low season, and after that. Um, there'll be 30% of the rack rate if you go beyond the six weeks. Um, can guests use Best Western points? Um, yes, they, they can, and you still get compensated. Um, the, there's a formula that Best Western uses that the points are worth and it's not like you'll not earn money when points are used, so. If, if we, you know, if we we're happy with the point system, how it's working, we can we can scale that up as well. It's kind of under our control. Uh, again, just looking through the questions that are coming in, uh, whether I've answered them or not. Um, Here's one, uh, to what extent does the transition to Best Western depend on all units having been updated? In other words, will the early adopters have to wait for everyone else before reaping the benefits of the Best Western marketing and global rental program? The bottom line is we won't wait. We're gonna open um, on our schedule with the units that have been upgraded, regardless of the number. And you know, if there's fewer units um, than we have now under the, under the Best Western program, then they'll just have higher occupancy and higher ADRs. So um, I think the incentive to do that, you know, again, is, is there. 
I mean, I'm, I'm hopeful that everybody that rents now wants to become part of the Best Western program. We, we, we didn't do this because we think it's just, you know, another turn of the page. We really worked hard at this over the last year, year and a half as a benefit for everyone. So hopefully, hopefully I'm doing a reasonable and a good job at, at describing why you'd want to join a program. Um, here, here's one that's maybe a little bit longer in answer, and I'll try to shorten it, but um, other than posting Grand Bayman Gardens on its website, what other promotional activities is Best Western committed to? Um, Best, you know, Best Western works directly with many of the OTAs, the travel agents, and, and yes, through their own website as well. But they also assist in, in franchise level marketing flyers and brochures, as well as online and social media announcements and that sort of thing. They have, they have that large membership program, um, you know, with, and with us being the first um, Best Western on Ambergris Key and, the, and only the second in the country, you know, we, we expect to see a lot of support and we've already seen a lot of support from Best Western. Best Western is also very excited to, to add another Caribbean franchise and um, specifically here in Belize and, you know, they've been, you know, paying a lot of attention to us. And I talk to them just about every day. Um, the Latin American and Caribbean group is based out of Mexico City. And you know, we're, we're in constant touch. And, and despite the fact that you know, they're having a lot of their own issues to deal with because of the virus, they, they still make the time to, to check in, in with us almost daily and see what we need for support. And, and so they're, you know, they're, yes, a lot of it is obviously the best Western name, but there's, there's a lot more to it than that. Um, here's another one. How are units that are for sale handled? Um, there's really no change. Uh, if, uh, if the unit is upgraded to a Best Western unit prior to sale and it's in the program, then they can stay in the program with the new owner. Um, if the unit was not in the rental program, then it would have to be the option to, to join. But like I said earlier, it's probably a significantly higher initial fee than we're offering today. Um, but I do think being part of the Best Western program will definitely be a selling feature for anybody that is, you know, intending on selling their unit. Uh, so those were some of the questions that were also in the FAQ. And like I said, I think most of the, uh, sorry, Sabrina Johnson just asked a question, Patrick, did you say two weeks in the high and four weeks in the low season per room each year? Yes, that is correct. A total of six, two in the in the high season. Um, high season is roughly from, you know, mid December to just after Semana Santa or Easter. So, and then four weeks in the in the low season. And you know, we we appreciate anybody that gives us as much notice. I know the front desk certainly appreciates as much notice as when you're using your unit. Um, Obviously, if it's already reserved during that time, we will do our best to move the reservation to to another unit. But um, you know, like I said earlier, if if a if a um, guest requests a certain unit because they, they they really like the unit, and then you want to come in and use it, and we have to move them, sometimes the guests aren't that happy about that. So we you know we try to you know try to get as much advance notice as you can give us. So we you know that that's always appreciated. I think that's most of the questions that that um, are been listed on just like I said, there's a number I think uh, I'm scanning through them again to make sure I'm not missing something. says uh, I thought I saw something about property management in here sorry I just don't want to miss one um, oh, Dirk Johnson asked are there are there property management fees not shown I mean currently we have a, a separate property management agreement but the uh, if you're in the in the in the Best Western program, 
you know, you, you'll become part of the property management program likely as well. It wouldn't really make sense to be in the rental agreement and not in the management agreement because it's difficult for us to keep the best Western standards up if somebody else is managing the room on a property basis. Um, but the, those fees are all included in the, in the uh, best Western or the, sorry, the rental agreement. Um, the property management fees are typically if something needs to be done, you know, they, you know, if you're, you know, like I said, if you had a water break or something like that, or for whatever reason, tiles are broken or your refrigerator stops working or something and we have to replace it. Um, what we, what we've done and always done. And, and, you know, I think you, many of you, if not all of you have seen is we typically send out a work order um, detailing what work needs to be done to, to bring the unit back up to rental condition. And, uh, you know, you, you have to authorize that there's a, a signature line on the bottom where you authorize us to perform that work. So you, you know in advance uh, what we're going to do. And, and obviously, the, the faster you can respond, if you agree with the, with the work order, the better. Because, you know, if a unit has an issue where we can't rent it, it's going to sit there unrented until we're given auth authorization to, to repair it. Um, I I don't think I don't think I've missed any other questions. Um, so, in summary, and if if I have missed any questions, first of all, feel free to to send an email. I'm always happy to respond. I try to respond as quickly as possible. Uh, somebody mentioned to me the other day that I responded very poorly, and then we realized that all my responses were in their junk mail. So again please, I, I try to respond almost always the same day or within 24 hours of receiving anybody's questions. Um, I kind of live in my email, so that's the best place to find me. Oh, one thing I didn't mention, I do want to mention that's worked well at other resorts too, is we, I'm, I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with WhatsApp. It's um, you know, a phone messaging system, very popular in Latin America. Almost everybody has WhatsApp. And it's just an instant messaging system where you can create groups. And um, what we found is, you know, it's it's always quicker than email to to you know, WhatsApp somebody if it's something urgent that you want to know. And I also try to stay in WhatsApp you know, forum pretty pretty consistently, so I can. I'm probably inviting a lot of a lot of WhatsApping that I may keep me up at night. But it the we we've, we've created. Um, a Grand Bayman public alert group and a Grand Bayman um, owners group. And what those really are is if you're, if you're interested in being in them, the public alert group is something, you know, for example, if there was a, you know, a hurricane expected to come or a, you know, tsunami, I know it's not things we don't necessarily want to think about, but we'll blast out a message in there saying, you know, this is, there was a 5.3, you know, magnitude earthquake and, don't worry because it requires a 6.0 to cause a tsunami, et cetera. And we find that you know, a very valuable tool to have and, and, and our, our owners at the resorts that use the, or are part of those groups are, are you know, very happy that they have kind of instant messaging telling them what's going on. And then the residents group is actually, um, residents or owners group is interesting too, where you know, you'll have you know, less formal discussions and it'll be, oh, you know, Take a look at the, you know, the flowering plants that we have. We'll send the pictures or something, or or people will say, "Oh, I just baked bread in you know unit C three hundred eight or whatever." And if anybody's interested, I'm happy to share. You know those sorts of things. So it, it it's actually a bit of a community builder. And uh, again, you can ask, uh, send a message to Lorena, and she can add you to to those groups. And uh, they they tend to become more active as more people get on them. I would ask that you know anybody that joins the groups be respectful. This isn't a you know this isn't a method of you know venting. It's not meant for complaining. If you have something you're not happy with, please send me a message because I can't do anything if I don't know if the situation exists. But you know we we do have respect rules on these groups. So if if someone's going to kind of go beyond the border of respect, will or start attacking other owners or something like that, we'll we'll delete them from the group. So, but it is a very useful tool. So, you know, just want to mention that as well. 
So like I said, we're very excited. We hope you're very excited to, to have the opportunity to join the Best Western brand and the family. We do expect a, a good year next year. We don't know exactly exactly when that's going to start, um, but we're, you know, we're, we're preparing for it. And I think going into the high season as a Best Western will give us the best chance for, for the, you know, improving our return on investment. So unless there's any other questions, um, I think that's pretty much what we had for a presentation. I hope that, you know, we answered a lot of the questions. Again, I do apologize that it's a little bit backwards. We sent the uh, information out, you know, in terms of what things were going to cost before we told you what it was and, and before we had a chance at this webinar. But, you know, there was reasons for that and, and it's not necessarily the way we wanted to do it. But now, now we're here, now we're, you know, answering questions and, and we're wanting to move forward and, and looking forward to, to ramping up the Best Western as, as quickly as we can. So let me just check the questions and answers one more time. And uh, it doesn't look like there's any new ones. So uh, I'll take that to mean that we answered everybody's questions. And uh, I want to thank everybody for, for joining us. We had a good number of attendees. There's over 20 people on the call and this was recorded. So for those people that couldn't make it, um, they can listen to it in the future. And we will try very hard to get you the, the new agreements and the list of upgrade items in, in, in the next days, for sure, weeks, and um, you'll have all that in front of you and be able to ask any questions you might want to ask. All right, then thank you, everybody. I'm not sure. I'm going to turn this over to Ivan to tell me how to get out of this and, and quit. But thank you again, everybody. And uh, no, unless any, any Mike, I don't know. I know Mike Cobb has joined on. I don't know if you'll have anything particular you want to say while you're while you're here? No, but uh, but Patrick, thank you for uh, for for running a great webinar and pulling all this information together. I know there was uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, you know reaching and grabbing and and sorting that had to get done to pull it in from the various uh, you know entities. And you know we're excited about the Best Western. It's really a, a great first step towards uh, you know bigger and better things for all of us and. Patrick mentioned, you know, we, we do understand that we've dropped the ball and, and you know, and, and I guess the, the, the bottom line is, is, you know, we're here, we're still here, we're going to stay here. Uh, we're in this for the long term and, and yes, we make mistakes, but, you know, we, we are figuring out better ways to address those uh, concerns and, 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 and bring in experts who can do a far better job at some of these things than we can. So uh, thank you for, for sticking with us and, uh, letting us have the opportunity and the time to to make the changes that will be meaningful for for all of us. So uh, again, I think uh, I think Patrick and his team, Lorena, uh, Lorena, you're doing a phenomenal job. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I know things have improved dramatically since you came on board just about six months ago. Um, you know, you, you and 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 your you know, new team, some of them old, some of them you know, some of them new. Uh, are doing a tremendous job, and I just want a big shout out to you, Lorena, for for uh, picking up the ball, uh, picking up a dropped ball in many cases, and and bringing it forward. Uh, and now with the policies, procedures, uh, systems, uh, QC training, uh, all of the things that Best Western brings to the table, uh, th this is really going to be a, a, a big change, a powerful change uh, for the organization and for. Uh, what that means to uh, everybody who owns a property with us. So, uh, again, big shout out to Lorena, Patrick, your team, and uh, and for uh, for all the owners for for again sticking with us and and uh, bearing with us as we you know got the refinement in place to to take this to the next level. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Um, just quickly before I end, um, there was one more question from Gene McNeely: Is are we covered by insurance? Uh, yes, the building, you know, we have insurance through um, the HOA, we have, you know, insurance for the property, the buildings. Um, that That's not content insurance, though. So just to be clear, if you have specific, you, you can, you can, you are, you know, obviously have to get specific content insurance yourselves if, if you want it. Our, our insurance covers, you know, things like fire and on the buildings and earthquake and those sorts of things. But, um, 
your you know your internal content if you had a water break and it was all destroyed for some reason um, that's that's not covered by the by the building insurance so just hopefully that clarifies that anyway again thank you everybody that was it for the questions that i've got in front of me so we're going to end it now and i appreciate you joining us and we'll again whenever you have any questions do not hesitate to send me an email and and then if you don't hear from me check your junk mail because that's where my response probably went <laughs> anyway thanks again I'll talk to you soon <laughs>